In the Mexican food world, there are all kinds of great things to eat. But today, today, my friends, is a chorizo torta that will blow your mind. I'm about to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to have a beer. There's two reasons for this. The first is that, well, of course, we're making a Mexican torta that will be crazy delicious. So this just seems right. The second is that today is Father's Day. And it's just, this is for me. I freaking love Modelo. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Thank you, Max. Here's the thing. You might be thinking, wait a sec. I'm watching this Monday, the day after Father's Day. Aren't those clowns any more ahead than this? Oh, we're ahead. Sometimes. And maybe we've got things shot that we don't want you to see yet. Because we're saving them for special occasions, right? Yeah, maybe. Right, maybe. And then maybe there's just like, hey, this is a good last-minute idea. Let's do this. Max will work all night, and we'll throw it up on the, uh, the YouTube tomorrow. In any case, I get a beer out of the deal. But I'm going to start with the chorizo because I told you we were putting chorizo in this. And if you've watched me for even a modicum of time, however much modicum it is, you may have seen me before rally against beef chorizo. My little rant was something like, look, there's all kinds of chorizo. There's pork chorizo, which is the best. And then there's beef chorizo. And then, in fact, there's soy chorizo. And I would eat the soy chorizo before I ate the beef chorizo. There's beef chorizo and there's soy chorizo. Forget the beef chorizo. Not that I hate beef, but I do not like beef chorizo. I've said it before. There's a beef chorizo I don't like. Well, I take all that back today. Because that was before one of my other sons, Jordan, brought me some beef chorizo from a little Mexican supermarket that I needed for a thing I was doing at the taco shop that we have that aren't Mexican tacos. So it was for something else, but I needed some chorizo. And he picked me up fresh beef chorizo. Fresh beef chorizo from a little Mexican supermarket. And the sh changed my mind. Insanely good. I've always bought, like, the, you know, supermarket brand chorizo. Just, uh, that's over. Those days are over. I owe an apology to the beef chorizo. Sorry. I owe an apology to the fresh beef chorizo makers in this world. You've been making incredibly delicious, beautifully spiced chorizo, and I've ignored you, and I take that back, and I'm encouraging everyone watching, find a little Mexican supermarket and buy this stuff, because it's the best. And if you don't have a little Mexican supermarket by you, find one, and if you're really stuck, then use the supermarket stuff because it'll still be good. But it won't be this good. It's just, uh, I, it smells through here in the most delicious way ever. So, but we have to start by, by cooking some of this chorizo. So, I'll open the pack if I can, put some into my already heated pan, and we'll be off to the races. And before I take the plastic off, that, that was the price. $10.97. $10.97. This was almost three pounds, so I think that's pretty good for this gorgeous fresh chorizo. And chorizo really, in this case, is just ground beef mixed with spices like chili powder and, and paprika and cayenne and stuff like that. So let's just take this over and we'll put some of this in our waiting pan. So we don't need that much because I'm kind of just making like one of these, but then in we go. Oh, maron. Like any kind of ground beef, you have to cook it until it's done. So in our case, this is probably going to take seven, eight minutes. But the point is you can get this part ready way ahead of time. And then just reheat it when you want it. Okay, so while the chorizo cooks, don't blast the heat. Medium heat is fine. Uh, we've got to deal with an avocado or two. So we'll go do that. Why is there something on your finger, by the way? Oh, this? This? This you want to know about? You know what this is? Every woman in the audience will recognize this. Jilly? Hair locket? Yeah, 
hairband. I was cleaning out my car, and I found this, and Kelly is always looking for one of these. Why you guys don't just buy like a million? They just come in like millions? Yeah. They should. So, gentlemen, if you find one of these, st stick it on your fingers, and then give it to your wife, and you say, sweetheart, I was thinking about, you know, I found this. I know you're always looking for one of these. Shh, you'll be a star. A star. Okay, this. This is, wait, let me just show you. This is incredible. Do you see the color, the richness, the sheen, because there's fat in here? I'm, this, 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 the hell am I trying to say? This torta is uh, one, two, three, four, really four ingredients. I need five if you count the limes, and then salt and pepper don't really count. Um, uh, one of them was cheese that I counted in my head or said out loud, but I didn't tell you what it was. Uh, modeled after one that I had in Cabo. Oh, my God. Or as the Canadians would say, Cabo. I had that in Cabo. I'm sorry, where? Cabo. I don't know where that is. It's in Mexico. You know, Cabo San Lucas? Oh, you mean Cabo San Lucas. Now, can you pass the basil? Okay, pass the basil. Right, and I'd like three tacos, please. And I'll eat them while I'm watching a movie, sitting on my Chesterfield. Driving my Mazda. Driving, driving my Mazda. Or wait, no. or, uh, or wait, what's that? Uh, a Datsun 240Z. <laughs> that takes me back. Okay, um, there, is a, there is an avocado component to this. It's not guacamole. It could be, but I like the avocado to speak for itself. So it's going to be avocado, lime, Salt and pepper. That's it. Dig? Let's make it. So we take our avocado. Right from the top, we cut down to the pit. Can't go any further. And then, if you want, look, don't really even need your hand on this. Just roll the knife right back around until it comes back to the top. And then we twist and separate. That's a nice looking avocado. Thank you very much. I know how to pick them. I just do a couple cuts in here. This way, and then this, we scoop out, and we put into our bowl, just like that. And then repeat. The pit out, a couple cuts, a spoon. Here we go, we'll do one more, because we can. Beautiful. My work is getting great here. You can do that with a spoon. Scoop and out. Now we had some lime juice, but the lime is, is a little hard. So to get more juice out of it, we'll just take it and we'll break it up. We'll take it and we'll roll it, and that will break up the fibers on the inside. So now when we squeeze it, watch, we'll get much more juice than if we hadn't done that at all. I heard somebody say once the other thing to do is poke a couple little holes in it and throw it in the microwave. But microwaving a lime just seems like the most ridiculous thing ever. And I don't want hot f***ing lime juice. Thank you very much. Oh, just poke holes and put it in the microwave. Oh, yeah. Why don't I just put it down the back of my pants and sit on it and drive to f***ing Los Angeles for a couple hours? Won't that do the same thing? That was disgusting. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. I apologize. But because it's Father's Day, I get a pass. As all fathers do. And if you didn't get your pass on Father's Day, dads, call it any other time in the following month. Salt and pepper. He said, hoping it was landing where it's supposed to. Look, I got it. And then we mix. Just break it up. Start to mash. I definitely don't want it like a paste. I like it a little bit chunky. I always want my avocado stuff to be a little bit chunky. So, when it's nice, we set it aside and we carry on. So while we're here, let's look. And this is gorgeous and ready. See how it's dried out a little bit? We should probably just taste it, right, Max? It'd be silly not to. Look at the color. The smell you get standing right here. The spices coming off this.
Dear Beef Trezo, where have you been my whole life? It's that simple. Now for the torture roll itself. Here's what I'm using. So I'm using this guy. A Tolera. Often used for a Mexican torta. Nice, big, soft, gorgeous, perfect. I can't wait. But we're going to cut him, of course. Wouldn't serve it the guy like this. The guy. And now I want a little color on here. So I'm going to put this and this face down on the Evo. Do your thing, little guys. And while they start to get a little color, let's grate some cheese. Uh, Max just said, aren't you going to butter or oil those? And I said, you know what? I don't know. I'm not feeling like it. This is a block of Monterey Jack cheese that I will shred because it's going on top. Shredding cheese. It's great. Look at that beautiful little pile. There's nothing like freshly grated cheese. Like I buy shredded in the bag all the time, but when I just get a block of it like this, I'm so damn happy. So damn happy. Okay, we're ready to build this. Here's my two sides. Look, they get gorgeous without uh, butter on them. Freaking need to remember that. Now comes the chorizo. Chorizo. Right on this kid. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you what makes this so good. Yes, of course, the flavors, which are huge and unbelievably delicious. But it's this little handful of ingredients. And who doesn't want to have a good, simple recipe that turns out to be something this fantastic, this easy in their back pocket? I mean, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Can think I'm right. I don't sing anything, but I know I'm right. And it's Father's Day. I should be able to say anything and get and, they, and get people to agree with me. Here comes the cheese. Look, you have a choice at this point. Oh, this is so light and lovely. It's great. You have a choice at this point. You can be a complete fucking sting and put on like an eighteenth of an ounce of the cheese or you could be like oh this is for my company i want this to be great i'm going to put a lot on so you put a fucking lot on and then we're going to pick this guy up put him on a baking sheet take him inside and throw him under the broiler for about 45 seconds when you put something under the broiler that is not the time to walk away because it happens fast so stay right there and monitor and here we are. Wow. So look at it's what you want. Crispy here. You want to see the trees on the sides. Don't cover it up with way too much cheese because then it'll just make ugly presentation. Still delicious, but ugly. Okay, so let's take this guy off. It's hot. And down we go. Look. Hello, my little friend. As we ovo up. Our top bun. And this is also not the time to be a cheap ass at adding the avo. Do you want it okay or do you want it good? I think you want it good, so don't hold back. Please. And I'm ready to put this on, Max, when you're ready to watch it go on. And down we go. And we cut. Serrated knife is perfect for this. Oh, please. Mother, may I? This is insanity. All right, so you pick it up in your hand. It's a little bit crispy. It's a little bit warm. The olive is dripping out. And then you want to bite... Oh my, of everything. Look. 
I don't know if there are non-chorizo fans out there. I can't imagine there could be. Certainly, if I gave you a bite of this, you'd be like, chorizo fan? That's me. I'm all in, Sam. And I think you should be. One of the things we do here, along with trying to get you to cook more, eat less fast food, eat less frozen food, get less takeout. One of the things we try to do is broaden your culinary horizons. And I'm not talking about sophisticated shit, foie gras and truffles and things like that. I'm just talking about getting some simple Mexican beef chorizo and throwing it in a pan and making gorgeousness like this with it. Do you realize with that chorizo in a pan, like the point we got it to, with some beaten eggs added to that, and then some of this Monterey Jack cheese, what an amazing scramble that would make? And then stuff that inside of a big giant tortilla with some guacamole or avocado or whatever. Maybe some tots. Yum. Be so good. All right. That's it. It's that simple. I'm not going to preach anymore. But I do want you to eat more different stuff. So if you're not a Trezo fan, try it. And then tell me you hate it. And then I, I will say, I'm sorry. I led you astray. Which is never going to fucking happen because you're going to love the shit out of this. Thanks for hanging out with us. Road to a million. We're getting so close. I can smell it. Can you smell a million? I don't know. I can taste it. That's, that's jacked up, too. Thanks for hanging out with us. Liking, subscribing, commenting. Oh, and when, you, and when you subscribe, hit the little notification bell. That's the only way you find out, without having to do any work, that we put up a new video. Simple. And, and the only way to be in the notification squad. That just sounds silly. I don't want to be in a notification squad. Can I just get notified? If you want to be in Max's notification squad, I'm sure there's a t-shirt coming out anytime soon. I'm in the squad with like one of those. You just put that finger away. It's Father's Day. I can do what I want. See ya.